Hey everybody, Mr. Macintosh here, and Apple has just released macOS Monterey Beta 9, only a little over a week after Beta 8. So they're really starting to accelerate the release schedule of Monterey coming up on the final release, which could be within the next couple of weeks. I'm gonna go over all the fixes and changes that you're gonna need to know in this update, along with some undocumented ones that Apple didn't even include in the patch notes. We'll do an update on Universal Control. I'll also give you an update on Ben and Patch Sir, plus some open core legacy patcher news and at the end i'll talk about the release schedule that we might be seeing within the next couple of weeks of mac os monterey so we've got a lot to cover let's jump in and get started Let's talk about what was released today. Apple usually releases their beta and final releases on Tuesdays or Thursdays, but they decided to release everything on a Wednesday. iOS 15.1 beta 3 was dropped along with iPadOS 15.1, watchOS 8.1, tvOS 15.1, and audioOS for HomePod beta 3 was also released. On the Mac side, Apple released a newer beta version of the Catalina Security Update 2021. They bumped the build number there, and they also released a brand new release candidate of macOS Big Sur Security Update 11.6.1. Apple also released a new seed number two for Safari 15.1. So we're probably going to see Safari 15.1 released to macOS Catalina and macOS Big Sur along with the security updates. Apple also released the Apple Silicon M1 Beta 9 IPSW Restore file. We're also waiting on the public beta and the full installer of macOS Monterey Beta 9 too. I usually put a little place marker here and as soon as that is released, usually the next day, so that would be October 7th at 12 noon Central Standard Time, I'll put a brand new link to the install assistant so you can start downloading it and installing. And while we're talking about this, I wanted to mention really quickly about some install issues that a couple users have reached out to me saying that they cannot update their beta 6 to beta 7, 8, or even 9 today. And this can be a problem, right? So if you go into system preferences and you click on update and it doesn't work or it restarts back to the OS and nothing's happening, the install assistant will have the full installer inside, download that, run the full installer, and that could get you up to the current beta 9. And that's the easiest way to do it when you're having install issues with the Delta update. Let's talk about the update sizes. If you're coming from beta eight to beta nine, it's going to be the smallest update, only two gigabytes. If you're coming from beta seven, 2.2, and beta six, 2.6. Now keep in mind, again, a couple of you reached out in the comments and said, hey, wait a minute, my update size is bigger. So let's take a quick peek at that. If you have the Mac OS Monterey in here, it'll show you the, the initial size. So the initial size for this is 2.05 gigabytes for my beta eight to beta nine update for the Delta update. But once you click install now, it shows you the total size of the update once it takes a scan of the system. So you can see here it's 2.75 gigabytes so when you take a not when you take a look at the size of the update this is probably the one that you want to keep an eye because this is how much it is actually downloading from apple's software update server so keep an eye on that the apple silicon m1 firmware was also updated to 742940 92 0 0.5 and for intel t2 max the bridge os was updated to 1916 5.1 and then finally there was a safari update Mac OS Monterey gets Safari 15.1, so it was updated to 17612291.1. Let's hop over to the Mac Mini M1 to take a look at the details of the update. The build number was updated to 21A5543B. Oh, now let's talk about how long it takes to install Beta 9 update. Now this update, as I mentioned before, was updated from Beta 8 to Beta 9. So the part where it says preparing, that took 13 minutes, even though it said it was gonna take around 30. And the install time when it rebooted to the installer with the progress bar and the Apple logo took 19 minutes. Total time from preparing to installing to a usable desktop, 32 minutes. And again, that's on one of the fastest M1 Macs available. Let's give a quick update on Universal Control. We're still waiting. It is not in Beta 9. I'm hoping we'll get it soon before the final launch, but we haven't heard anything from Apple. They've removed all references to Universal Control in the patch notes. We haven't seen anything since around Beta 5. It's possible that it might not be ready for the final version of Mac OS Monterey. It might be released in, for example, 12.0.1, or if Apple goes to 12.1, 
one or later. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Again, no word from Apple. Now, what's interesting is I still have it in here. I did that workaround with the feature flags folder in library preferences. So when we go into displays, I can click add displays and I still have that advanced button where I can click on that and see these options here. But if I remove that and reboot, it's not going to show up in here. So all I have the options to do is mirror or extend my display to my T2 Mac mini or my iPad. And again, when even when you go into the iPad, you can see in here that normally you used to be able to go into the settings and then click AirPlay and handoff here and toggle the handoff off and on and see the universal control settings. That's not on that. And this iPad is on iOS 15.1 beta 3. So again, it's on the latest version that was released today and there's no options for universal control in here yet. So again, I'll keep a close eye on this and hopefully we'll get some news soon from Apple. Now let's talk about the beta 9 features and changes and fixes. There's only one change in the beta 8 to beta 9 patch notes that Apple provided, and that has to do with the Apple App Store or the Mac App Store, and something about an unfinished property no longer returns a certain result. So nothing that most people would be even concerned about. So let's talk about something that we would be concerned about, and that is monitor issues. So as soon as beta 8 was released, there was a lot of users on Reddit that were reporting problems with external monitors and you can see the poster here mentions right away like hey I updated to beta 8 and I do not have any monitor support I don't know what the problem is as soon as beta 9 came out I was hoping that we could start to see some reports and the good news is is that some of the users that originally mentioned this issue as soon as they installed beta 9 the monitor issues were gone and they lit up as soon as the update finished and that's an undocumented fix in beta 9 that Apple didn't even mention that was really important to a lot of users. Now let's talk about the new beta 9 features and eagle eye viewers might have already noticed this but we have a different background on the beta 9 test unit that I'm using the Mac mini M1. So if we click on here and log in to each one we can take a closer look at what that looks like here. So we can see right away that the beta 9 has the new dynamic desktop here and you can click on the Monterey graphic here and leave it on dynamic so it'll change throughout the day. It'll turn darker during the night and bright during the day so in the daytime it'll be the light so like this in the nighttime it'll turn full dark like this and you can leave it on dynamic and you can see how it changes through the dynamic graphic now what's interesting is is that a lot of us have been waiting for and you can see that that is not here in the beta 8 a lot of us have been waiting for one of the desktop pictures of maybe Monterey but it's possible that maybe Apple's not going to do that anymore the fact that they added the dynamic Monterey graphic here means that maybe they're changing it up a little bit. I hope they do because I really enjoy these pictures and I know a lot of other people do. They've had these pictures for a pretty long time now. There is one enterprise change in macOS Monterey Beta 9 that revolves around remote locks and new user accounts. So you want to take a look at that. I can't give the full statement because it's behind a login for Apple Seed members only. So you'll definitely want to log in and take a look at that and see the full description for that change there. Let's go over the benchmarks from beta 8 to beta 9 on this Mac Mini M1. The beta 8 benchmark for single core was 1751 and the multi core was 7748. And on beta 9, it was 1746 to 7690. So, again, very close. We're only looking for large discrepancies when we're doing these. They should be very close from beta to beta update. Now let's talk about some unsupported Mac patcher news. The first thing I wanted to cover was Patch Sir. I mentioned in the Beta 8 video that Ben was having some problems and Patch Sir was offline. The good news is in that time, Ben has returned. He's reached out to me and said Patch Sir is going to be returning. It's going to be coming back up on GitHub soon. Don't download it from any of these sites like MacUpdate.com or Softpedia. Make sure that it always comes from Ben's page or the GitHub page this is the official page. So as soon as I get an update from Ben on what's going to happen next, I will be able to have a path forward for Patch Sir. So that's some good news, and I'm glad you're back, Ben. It's great to hear from you. 
Now let's talk about some open quarter legacy patcher news. A lot of you have reached out and said, hey, wait a minute, the video that you just put out, my ultimate guide was using 0.2.4. And when 0.2.5 came out, the menu system changed a little bit. For macOS Big Sur, it's okay to run the 0.2.4 version because it's working fine. Now, if you wanted to jump to 0.2.5, I will be covering that soon. But even before I can cover that, the work is continuing on the latest version, 0.3.0. So most likely I'm going to jump right to this that should include all the changes in 0.2.5 So we'll be able to stay up to date now One of the most important things to know about this was is that the changes for Mac OS Monterey And that is we've got Bluetooth. We've got Wi-Fi We've got accelerated graphics and even for Big Sur and Monterey we can run AMFI or Apple mobile file integrity What's great about 0.25 and newer it is enabled by default now if we have have to install the accelerated driver patches so that's really great news I also wanted to touch on a really important feature coming up in Mac OS Monterey and that's AirPlay 2 a lot of you reached out and said I want to use my 2015 iMac or my 2014 Mac mini that's compatible with Mac OS Monterey but it doesn't work as an AirPlay receiver because it's not included in the supported model list well guess what that's already been covered and fixed by open core legacy patcher so if you click on this option right here where it says if you want to run open core legacy patch on a native mac please toggle allow open core on native models so what that means is is that even if your mac is supported you can install or boot off of open core legacy patcher and run that older mac that's still monterey compatible with airplay 2 so you could turn on that 2015 imac as an airplay 2 extended wireless monitor or even that mac mini connected to a monitor and use that as a second wireless monitor and you can go all the way back to 2011 iMac for example if you really wanted to use that as a wireless monitor and that's the beauty of open core legacy patcher before we get to the release schedule that I wanted to talk about for Mac OS Monterey, I wanted to highlight that Open Core Legacy Patcher and my videos were highlighted in a Lifehacker article, which was really cool. So if we go to Lifehacker, I'll put include a link in the description if I want to read the article. It talks about how to install the latest Mac OS on an unsupported Mac. Your aging Mac can still run Mac OS Big Sur and Mac OS Monterey Beta. It's a really nice article that goes over Open Core Legacy Patcher and why older Mac are not supported and it includes my videos that talk about how to install open core legacy patcher with big sur and mac os monitor so i thought that was really cool again i'll put that link in the description Let's talk about the release schedule of Mac OS Monterey here. We are beta nine and we're on October 7th. So if you think about it, we could see an RC release the week of the 11th here, or even the week of the 18th. We could even see an invite go out to the press for the new MacBook Pros and Mac OS Monterey here on the 12th or the 19th for next week on the 26th. So we could have the event on the 19th or the 26th here. And usually when that happens, the operating system itself is released two days later. That's what happened with Big Sur. M1 Max was announced on, on a, two days later. It was released on a Thursday on, on the 12th. So it's going to be interesting to see. We are coming up really quick here for Monterey. And we might see a release within the next two or three weeks. So again, I'll keep you updated with all the latest information as soon as it comes out. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up or a share. I would really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, I truly appreciate you and we'll catch you in the next video thank you all right let's have a look at some of these comments here no external displays are working on beta 8 any workaround data public launch have you not noticed there's a t in monterey monterey